When you become and you become part of a BBC show, you legally become public interest. What's that mean? It means that people can write certain things about you that they couldn't otherwise. So if you were to, for example, sue a newspaper, they would make a case that we could say that about him or we could reveal his private business because it's of public interest. They wouldn't be able to do that for someone that wasn't on the BBC. All of that stuff changes. The, the things that you have to keep the same, and I think this is the same for everybody, is you need to keep your circle of information, your circle of feedback tight and close and small. You have to put systems in place. And I think this is actually the case. This is what Joe Rogan's done really well. And I've heard him speak about it at great length is you can't search your name online, which I never do. Not TikTok, not Instagram, nowhere. There's a set of principles which are more important, which is like me being true to myself and delivering in my way. The feedback can be really distorting because it's not necessarily like always helpful. So someone could comment on something that I produce and say, this is terrible, this is dreadful. You need to do this, 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 and this. Now, if I take that feedback, violate my principles, you lose focus. To go for the decade, you have to limit the amount of feedback you get. But you've had a few periods where the press have been a Bit. How have you dealt with the felt? And what's that been like? You're a young guy. Like you've gone from this world where you got to be rich and largely anonymous, although you weren't totally anonymous, but relatively now very much changed. How do you deal with that as a felt sense of you? It's systems and processes again. Even my friends, right? So if my friends see something on TikTok or Instagram, or if it's like about my girlfriend or whatever, do not send it to me. I will not see it. Rogan's the same. It's not a useful it's sort of way to allocate your chips. So it all comes down to systems and processes. In my hardest moments when I'm being criticized or scrutinized or whatever, for me, that's what it comes down to. It's like, keep my circle super small, focus on what I'm doing. Rogan's solution was heavy kettlebell workout, five minutes of cold therapy, and three grams of magic mushrooms per oh, day. Oh, really? You know, people from the outside looking in at somebody that gets the accolades and can hang with Prince William and make breakfast in a pret or whatever. What do people not realize about the reality of the sort of scrutiny that comes along with big platforms? I think it's maybe just, there's like an ongoing, always on paranoia, which I think is just this numbing paranoia in the background. And also this realization, which is actually something I learned from that one day, by the way, where I was with Prince William. We're not friends. He doesn't know who I am. When I spent that day with him and I posted, oh, I've just been with Prince William. We did this business initiative. Every single message I received was amazing. How is he? Amazing. 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 It's this realization that everyone you meet, you're meeting everyone they know. That's a lot of pressure to never have a bad day in public. And it actually gives me huge empathy for someone like Justin Bieber, who is actually famous. I watched the video of him going, please, can you not come to my home, please? And I go, oh man, it's no way to live your life, is it? Ambient anxiety. I get you with that. I'm nowhere near some of these people that live that like a dream or even a Rogan mm. or a Justin Bieber. So we went for Nando's in Manchester, Gymshark Lift LA weekend. He'd got his EA to text me and say where it was going to be and when, or maybe he'd text me or whatever. And I walk in and he sat down reading something on his phone or watching or whatever. And I think his EA and his EA's assistant or something has sat on a different table. We got talking. For the people who don't know, Ben Francis is the CEO of Gymshark and his net worth is three times what Drake is worth. Triple. And then I thought, what would the experience have been like if I tried to come to this Nando's with Drake? <laughs> and Drake wouldn't have got within two miles. He would have been mobbed, he would have been swamped, it would have been chaos. It made me start to think about the price that people pay for the wealth that they have, right? Ben Francis has managed to accumulate an awful lot of wealth and the felt price that he has to pay is three times less than Drake. He doesn't have to have security with him. He had no security, he had, his EA is like five foot six, 100, 100 pounds, right? What's the cost of, in Ben's case? Of not being as famous? Of the game he's chosen to play, which is business versus I like- I suppose that, you know, he's, he's, he's not going to be, get the public accolade as much. He won't get access to as many cool things because people aren't going to be constantly looking for him. He's not like the the hot girl on your arm that you can trot out at some event. He's very rarely going to be sat front seat at a Lakers game and it pan and go and here's the CEO of Gymshark, Ben Francis. The hardest times of my life were running business. They weren't like dealing with journalists. It was like the pressure of knowing payroll is tomorrow and looking at the bank balance and knowing there's nothing in there and then looking up in the office and seeing 200 people in our HQ that are joyous and celebrating because they think it's payday tomorrow and me knowing in my head that I have 24 hours to persuade Natalie at our bank to put money in our account or else they're not getting paid. The pressure of that is much worse than any article or getting mobbed at Nando's. It's a different level of pain. All things in life have a cost. This is my conclusion. Drake's thing has a cost, which is privacy and all of those issues. Ben's thing has a cost as well, which is, oh, I, even thinking about it gives me goosebumps because I know the feeling. They're two different costs and it goes back to what you said is which cost are you willing to, to incur?